Here we go. Let's do this. All right. And we officially, we are live on the Help a Teacher Facebook page every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. And, you know, I, I debated doing this week. I was talking with Debbie and she said, are you going to do this one? I said, I think I am. And the reason was, is, you know, this is a time when teachers are out of the classroom at home with their families and they are resting and um, recovering emotionally from the first semester and just trying to get recharged and rejuvenated. And oftentimes with teachers, what that includes is <laughs> just indulging in all those wonderful treats that we have around the holidays and food. And one thing that is, is, is a topic of conversations in schools everywhere is health and fitness and nutrition and trying to lose weight and trying to um, have a, a, a physical presence that represents who we really are. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk with my friend, Pamela Davis, and she is probably not even probably by far. She is the absolute best example of someone I know that um, has been able to make an absolutely amazing transformation in her life. And so uh, I know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Pamela kind of get into the whole story, but what she has accomplished inside of a one-year period, um, it, it just changing who she is and what she does and everything about her life has been absolutely amazing. So here we go, Help a Teacher Live on uh, the Help a Teacher Facebook page every Monday night, Pamela Davis. My gosh, so hello. good to see you. How are you? hello. hello. Yeah. All right. So here's, you know what, here's what I thought we'd do. Hey, Paula, happy, happy holidays to you too, is here's what I thought we'd do is um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to tell this story because this is, you know, like, I don't want to give away the whole thing, but kind like kind of give it in a nutshell without the big obstacle along the way. Um, at some point in your life, you decided that you wanted to make a change in terms of how you're eating and exercise and what, and, and you had this amazing transformation, um, inside of 12 months. And so just kind of give us that part inside of those, that 12 month period, what were you able to accomplish? So basically I was the fat girl my entire life. Um, obesity ran in my family, always just, you know, struggled with my food addiction. Um, in March of 2018, I'm a huge Spurs fan. My daughter took a picture of me um, in front of a Spurs mural and we left and I was pushing 300 pounds. I was in the good 290s um, and we left. And I remember just, uh, that was a turning point for me. I looked at that picture and I kind of processed for a minute and I thought, what am I doing? What got me here? Um, I was tired all the time. You know, I taught kindergarten, which takes a lot out of you. Um, I was just drained. I don't feel like I was a good teacher because I was tired all the time. Um, so I left that day and I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. So I went home. I started trying to plan out some meals. Um, I couldn't work out because I was so big. Um, so I started walking. Um, basically within a 12 month period, I lost about 150 pounds and gave a body part away. <laughs> right. We're going to give the body part. Cause let's be clear. The, the body part didn't weigh 150 pounds. So <laughs> that was a small Sadly amount. Enough. Right. Sadly enough. And so we, um, so the, the transformation, it was now, by the way, we're, this is without surgery. I mean, like um, no gastric surgery. bypass, no sleeve. This is just me determined to change my lifestyle and get healthy. Okay. And then we'll get to the body part. So here we go. This in, so you saw the picture of you and what, 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 like, what, what did that feel like when you're looking at yourself in that picture? You felt what? It's, it's almost this weird out of body thing where you're looking at that picture and you're like, is this really me? And I remember looking at the picture and I was standing in front of a mirror and I'm like, how did I get here? I just kept, and I said out loud, how did I get here? Like, I think I was like 294 pounds at my biggest. And, you know, I just, I didn't feel good. I felt gross all the time. I was lethargic and I just, I knew I needed to do something to change mentally. I felt like, okay. It was like, you know, I, I, you almost don't feel all this weight on your body, if that makes sense. It's there, yeah. but you don't feel it mentally. Um, 
And I did. I just stared at that picture and I just kept asking how I got to that point. And it's, it's, you almost go into this dark place of, I'm so big. Can I turn this around as big as I am? Can I turn it around? Like, is that realistic? And, and to give picture, people a picture, um, how tall are you? I'm five, two on a good day, five, one and a half. And so, you know, cause 294 on somebody that's six foot two is very different than 294 on somebody that's five foot two. I mean, my ankles were huge. Uh, my feet were huge. My fingers were, I mean, everything, every part of my body was just huge from poor eating. Yeah. And then uh, here's, here's what I love is everybody has a plan. Everybody goes home and says, I think, I think everybody gets to that point where enough is enough. I'm changing. This is it. But what's different about you is for some reason you, you were able to stick with it over the course of 12 months and not give up and then increase the intensity and increase the focus. Oh, and I think what, what I'm, I'm just wondering, what is the difference between you who stuck with it and me that might give up after a week? You know, it's determination comes at different levels. Like I remember there was a point in my life where I had that mindset, I'm going to lose weight. I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, and I had lost maybe 40, 50 pounds and then I would gain it back and then some. Um, and yeah. then several months later, oh, I'm going to do it this time for real. I'm going to do it this time. I really mean it. And I would lose 40 or 50 pounds and then gain it back and then some. And something in my brain this time, just a switch went off. And I thought, you know what, this yo-yoing and this back and forth is not good on my body. Um, and I tell people this all the time, like the one piece of advice I give to people when they reach out to me is for me anyway, to lose weight and it might work for other people. Bad food was my drug of choice for many years. So in order to have the determination to stick with it, I had to do literally one meal at a time. I had to say, okay, this meal, I'm going to eat healthy. Okay, this snack, I'm going to eat healthy. Because if I tried to sit down and do a whole meal map, it was overwhelming for me. And when junk food is your drug, you have to be cognizant of every bite of food you put in your mouth. Yeah. You know, I think I think people sometimes underestimate how damaging the yo-yo thing, the back and forth really is, not just physiologically, but also metabolically, where, you know, if, if they lose 50 pounds, that's amazing. But many times that 50 pounds might have, have included five pounds of muscle and 45 mm -hmm. pounds of fat. So when they gain it back, they didn't gain back the five pounds of muscle that they, now now they're actually five pounds heavier of fat. And then it, and then they do it again and again and again, and they keep mm -hmm. losing more and more muscle and getting more and more fat where they're the same weight, but that, that, that ratio of fat to muscle is decreasing. And then it's just harder and harder to lose because of the lack of muscle. And you do like, like I said, you, you have to take it one meal at a time. Sometimes some days with my food struggle, it was one minute at a time, especially when you're teaching and you're working in a school that, you get cupcakes and you get cookies and kids bring you biscuits for breakfast and tacos for breakfast. And it's, you have to get to a place where you tell yourself, okay, the student brought me tacos this morning. I'm not going to be a bad teacher or a rude person. If I just say thank you and don't eat them. Yeah. It's so, so true. And so I think, I think here's, here might be uh, one of the keys is, um, I think where a, a downfall might be for a lot of people is they try to change everything all at once mm -hmm. where what you're looking at is just get just one meal, man. Let me just get the breakfast right yeah. today. And I did like, if I tried to focus on the overall picture, it was overwhelming for me. So it was like, okay, I lost one pound today. We're going to focus on that one pound. I'm not going to set a goal of 20 pounds or 30 pounds or 40 pounds. You have to literally take it a pound at a time. Otherwise you're going to overwhelm yourself. Yeah. And then at this part, um, and this is a March, so you're teaching. So this is March and your spring break is happening. And are, did, did you start meal prepping and, and taking meals to school and all that? I did. I had to only because, I mean, you know, you do like you're surrounded by food. You walk in the break room and somebody made cupcakes just because or there's cupcakes in the classroom because it's a student's birthday and you know, there were times I literally would have these cupcakes in front of me and I'm standing there having this battle in my head of don't take a bite. 
don't yeah. take a bite. And you know, some people can do what they call a cheat meal and be fine. But when food is your drug, like for a long time in my weight loss in this process, I couldn't do a cheat meal because one would lead to another, to another, to another. And it was a downward spiral. Sure. And it's a powerful drug, man. It's like, like who's going to go up to a heroin addict and say, Hey man, just have a one heroin cheat hit. I mean, like I tell people that all the time. And it's like, you know, with alcoholism and drug addiction, you don't need alcohol and drugs to survive. Right. But food addiction is so much harder because you need food to survive. You can't live without it. Yeah. Hey, how long? So when you first started, you um, just the exercise, what, what, it was just walking at first? I would walk. So my best friend, Jessica Vidari, who is a teacher like me. And also uh, like a three-time teaching a rock star attendee. Exactly. Um, we would start walking together. Um, there was a trail by her house. And again, when you're almost 300 pounds, you can't really work out realistically. Um, and so I would walk. You know, it would take me in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, it would take me an hour to walk a mile, but I did it. And then, you know, I started shaving minutes off and shaving minutes off. And then a couple months in, I had lost enough that I was able to join a fitness program. I started Camp Gladiator. And, you know, even in the beginning of that, like they had to modify because I was still so big. There were certain, I couldn't do a sit up. I couldn't do a burpee. Still don't like burpees, but I can do them. No one does. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and, and it's almost like you're at this place where you're surrounded by all these fit people and you kind of regress. If that makes sense, you're like, well, this is really embarrassing. All of these people around me are healthy and they can do all these workouts and maybe I shouldn't be here. And you're like making excuses to not do it. You know, well, I'm tired because I was teaching all day. And then I even justified, well, I'm a teacher. I'm on my feet all day. That's a workout, right? Right. Well, for no, sure. I'm, you know, you, you justify, Having yeah. to do that physical activity after work because you're so tired. You don't want to do it. Hey, how did you handle those social situations with food? Because I know like your meal prep and eventually, and I, like, I know you started out with one meal at a time and then and let me have a healthy snack. Let me figure that part out. But eventually you have all your meals intact and you're consistent throughout the day. But we still have those moments where, you know, there's a teacher meeting and there's a big spread of food or there's some sort of after school event. How, how, how did you handle those kind of temptations? Um, as far as work, social events, honestly, meal prep is key. And I tell people, a lot of people just meal prep their actual meals. I didn't like I meal prep snacks. I would individually portion my food. You know, if I was taking like a handful of almonds, the easier you make it on yourself, because you know, as well as I do, teaching is like a train wreck. And once you get to work, like there's no stopping, there's no like you're go, 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 go. And if you don't have snacks on hand, I mean, I literally was sitting there doing guided reading groups, snacking on almonds, yep. because if you let yourself get to that point where you're hungry after school, when you have those social events, you're so hungry that you're going to automatically go to the bad stuff. So Guaranteed. you have to have little snacks handy that you're just in the middle of teaching, reading a story, like popping stuff in your mouth or, you know, whatever, because if not, you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. And here's what I love about um, what your insight is to this is like, you know how to do it. Like specifically, here's how you do it. I think sometimes we get information from books or from trainers who have never been there and they don't understand the psychology. They don't know what it takes. They've always been fit. They've never had a weight. Their body isn't, they're just D, like their DNA isn't wired to have any kind of issue with, with gaining weight ever. So they really don't understand. But what you seem to understand is not just the strategy and the tactical part of it, but also emotionally too. This is really hard. Food is definitely a comfort. You know, when you've, when you're working in any school, but specifically a school for me, um, where I had a lot of students with behavioral challenges it was very physically demanding for me having to restrain, um, just, you know, mentally draining, um, food comforts you in yeah. those situations. And you also have to have that mental shift in your head where you go, you know what? Food is not my friend. Food is there to nourish my body. It's not there to make me feel better. It doesn't always need to taste good. It's just there to give me nutrients. And until I shifted my mind into thinking that way, I was kind of setting myself up for failure, if that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, at what point did you realize, did you have that moment like you felt your first really um, significant win? Like, oh my gosh, like it is 
happening? You know, honestly, there were a couple. I know the first time I was able to do a sit up was like, oh my God, like I did a sit up, like, wow. And then I did a couple of sit ups. Um, some of the physical parts of the exercises for me were kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, the first time someone commented, are you losing weight? Like someone I hadn't seen in a while, that was, that was a big deal. It was like, okay. Those are huge moments. Yeah. It was like, okay, I noticed, but now they noticed. And um, how, how many pounds was that? Was that like 40 pounds in? Um, I think I was like 30, probably 30 pounds down when somebody yeah. noticed. Okay. And then, you know, just honestly, another big milestone for me was going into a clothing store for the first time and not having to shop in the plus size section. That yeah. was like huge for me. Huge. That You know, I think like we underestimate that, that feeling, that emotion, what that is, that's a, it's an absolute, like a complete life changing moment. It is like, you know, when you've, had to shop in that section since you were probably 11 or 12 and you're in your mid to late thirties now, and you have gotten out of that section for the first time ever. I mean, I remember I tried on a pair of pants that were not in the plus size section and they fit, they were snug, but they fit. Yeah. And I remember walking out to the car and I just cried. Like I just cried because I just thought, you know, here I yeah. am in my thirties and I've had this huge moment and that was a big deal for me. I love it. And then when did you feel like there was momentum building as you're losing weight and your exercise is increasing? Did you feel like it was not was I get like was it getting easier at that point? It was like honestly, so I have really bad. My trainer would she got on to me for it, but in the beginning I was weighing myself every day. Oh my god. And I know they say that's not healthy. But for me, the mental, it goes back to the mental part of it again with food. Yeah. When I would wake up and weigh myself and see that I had either lost or not gained anything, it was like, okay, I can go one more day without eating the bad stuff. I haven't gained anything. I can go another day eating healthy. And then the next day, weigh again. Oh, haven't gained anything. Okay, I can eat healthy one more. That's why I said you like literally have to take it baby steps because if not, you get overwhelmed. And for me, weighing myself and seeing that I hadn't gained anything, was my motivation to make it another day without indulging myself. Yeah. And then, and then as you're in this progress and this program, there's progress is happening. You're losing weight. The exercise is increasing. Um, did you feel an emotional shift within who you are and becoming and like in terms of your outlook and happiness? I did like you, you, you hate to tie in your confidence and your self-esteem to something that is basically a physical part of who you are, but the reality of it is you kind of do, yeah. you know, when you've been the old, the overweight person your whole life, you tend to like shy or hide behind people or, you know, I wasn't really one to like volunteer for a lot of things because I kind of like to fly under the radar, but the more weight you lose, you get this mental shift and you're like, you know what, I am worth something and I want to put myself out there. And you do, you tend to put yourself out there a lot more and socialize a lot more than you ever would. You know, even little things like talking to parents. Um, I was kind of quiet and reserved, and, you know, kind of hid behind a, like, you know, proverbial wall, if you will, I guess. But the more weight you lose, you, you are, you're very confident with who you are when you speak to people. And, you know, I have a theory about it, too, is I think that's that is part of it. I think there's another half of it that sometimes we miss, and that is you know, at some point you're the, the exercise and the training and all that you're doing is hard and it's hard and it's uncomfortable, but you push through it. And there's a, there's a, there is a, I mean, you can, you can't deny, I mean, there's a level of pain that you have to push through to get the other mm -hmm. side. And I think when you do that repeatedly day after day, and you're putting yourself in these awkward and painful experiences and emotionally, you're looking around and I don't, I'm not as fit as they are. Should I even be here? But you push through it and you overcome that uh, those days over and over consistently also, I th like, I think it, I think it affects your character and who you are and everything. And it does. It's, you know, I remember being at CG and some of the things they were asking us to do, me watching them like show us how to do it, thinking, yeah, there's no way you're crazy. That's not going to happen. And I would try it and it was very uncomfortable and some of it was painful. And, you know, in that moment, I'm literally standing there telling myself pain is weakness, leaving your body pain is weakness. I mean, just repeating it to myself and you, you push through it. 
And then the first time you're able to do it without it hurting or without you doing it wrong, because you finally figured out what you're doing. You're like, Oh my God, I did it. I'm kind of cool. Like, yeah. it's awesome. And then at some point along the way, there's this other huge obstacle, this huge challenge in your life. And that is you decided to give away a part of your body. So I started my weight loss journey in March of 2018. Um, I really didn't have a why other than that picture my daughter took that just completely disgusted me. And I'm like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm done. Um, between March and August of 2018, um, I lost about 60 pounds. And then in August, um, a girl that I went to high school with who doesn't really post much on Facebook, um, shared a link for the transplant institute and kind of threw it out there hey i'm in need of a kidney i'm in kidney failure um if anyone can find it in your heart you know click on the link and i i had seen it and i had read about organ donation and i thought it was interesting but when you're five two and almost 300 pounds it's not realistic right. um so i clicked on the link and it was some brief medical questions i think there was like five of them and they called me the next week and said can you come in for blood match testing so I went, um, they called a couple days later and basically said, you're a match, but you're still too big. We need you to lose more weight. And it was like, you know, I tell people all the time we talked prior, I said, you have to find your why, you know, I had doctors tell me you're going to be pre-diabetic and you're going to die at an early age because of your weight and you're going to have a heart attack and all of this negative stuff really was meaningless to me as far as losing weight. You know, you could tell me I'm going to be diabetic. You can tell me I'm going to have a heart attack. That was not my motivation to lose weight. I had to find the motivation within myself. And then when this um, girl that I went to school with posted that she needed a kidney, it was like, well, okay, well, I've already lost 60 and you're telling me I need to lose more. Well, I can probably do that. And so that was kind of my push to keep going. Yeah. And then this whole process of you losing weight and then you start with your why was the picture then becomes even deeper because now this really, um, I, I mean, not to exaggerate it, but you know, like it really is just someone's life is depending upon you and you keep going. And at what point uh, did, did that? What, like at what point did you get to the weight where you can slice open your body and hand over a kidney? Well, you know, it's, it was a process. Like you talked earlier about, you asked me about social situations yeah. and honestly, personally for a while in my weight loss, I couldn't go into social situations. You know, we go out and eat to celebrate birthdays and graduations. And honestly, I didn't go to things for a while in my weight loss because I was not at the point mentally where I could go to a restaurant and make a healthy choice. I just couldn't do it. So I just kind of, you know, became reclusive and kept to myself a little bit and didn't really put myself out there because I needed to focus on my health and my eating. Um, and then I basically, so I lost 60 pounds between August or I'm sorry, March and August. And then between August and December, I lost another 70 and I donated to her two days after Christmas because by then I had lost enough weight because your BMI has to be a certain amount for you to even donate. For sure. And then you donate and, um, and, I, and like I've seen the pictures, it's amazing. Um, you know, and honestly, when you go to donate an organ, it's a whole process, obviously. But aside from just the physical tests, you have to talk to a social worker. You have to have a psych evaluation. And, you know, I remember in the psych evaluation talking to them about my weight loss and they're like, you know, wow, mentally, you must be this really strong person that you did all of this with no surgery, just diet and exercise. And yeah, I felt like a really strong person, but there was a time there after the kidney donation, because obviously, you know, you've had stuff going on in your body. You can't work out and you have workout yeah. restrictions. That part was emotionally really hard for me. I went back to a place of oh my God, I can't work out. I'm going to become that 300 pound girl again. Well, if I can't work out, I might as well eat bad stuff. You start justifying again. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then when you were able, you were healing and you're back to the routine and you're back at school, um, you, somehow you're able to get right back into the flow of it and keep going. I did. You know, I, I have some really good friends, some really motivating friends. Um, some people I've met through CG, um, I wasn't supposed to go back and work out as soon as I did between you and I, but right. 
um, you know, again, that mental part of it takes over. And it's like, if I don't go back and work out, I'm going to regress. Yeah. Um, and I can't go back to that place. So you did, you know, you take it in stride. And I started walking again, which is how I started in the first place. Um, and even me, like, you know, I tell people all the time, honestly, I started my weight loss, my working out component. I walked laps at recess. We had this big circle around our playground, like that was the perimeter. And, you know, our 20 minute recess, I walk laps at recess every day. And it was really cute because in the beginning, the kids would ask me, what are you doing? It's like, I'm just walking. And by about maybe two weeks in, I would say, I had like a little a little trail of ducklings following me walking. <laughs> yeah, the the Pied Piper. Yeah. I walked laps at recess every single day. That's how I started. And so, but and at the at the end of the twelve month, we're looking at what one hundred fifty pounds, mm -hmm. a, donating a kidney, and then here we are. I mean, you know, eight nine months later, and and tell me where I mean, you know, where are you today? Are you still maintaining and feeling good? I am one hundred and seventy two pounds down now. Um, I would like to lose another ten or fifteen, but my body's kind of telling me like we're done. You need to stop. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. There are some drawbacks. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. um, but when you lose weight that quickly, obviously there are some skin issues that come with that. Sure. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, I would like to get the skin removed because I feel like I'm never going to see the full picture of the hard work that I did until I get it removed. Yeah. But again, I'm a teacher. So who's got like $11,000 laying around to go right. have it removed? You know, if I yeah. could stop buying copy paper and dry erase markers, maybe. Right. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm maintaining um, for the most part. I'm still, I'm kind of to a point mentally now where I can have that cheat meal, if you will, and get right back on track. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to undo all the work I've done, you know, it's, right. it's not been an easy road. Um, and now I have another why that has come up. All right, here we go. Well, tell <laughs> us. So, you know, the kidney donation was such a positive experience for me. And I tell people all the time with my weight loss, I was able to take control of my health on my own. Yeah. People who need an organ, they don't have the capacity to take control of their health. They need someone to help them. And because the kidney donation was such a positive experience for me, and I really feel like I got a lot out of it. You know, people say I saved her life, but me having to push through with my weight loss to do it, she kind of saved mine too. Yeah. Um, I had read a story after the kidney donation on some kidney donor blogs about a lady who donated her kidney and then several years later, donated part of her liver. I think it was like three or four years later. And I was like, oh, well, if she can do that, I can do that. And so I randomly called the transplant clinic one day and I was like, you know, I donated a kidney. What is your policy on donating part of a liver? And they're like, well, you know, we're going to send you some information, fill it out. So, of course, I sent it and filled it out. And my Thanksgiving break this year, I spent two days at the Transplant Institute undergoing testing to donate part of my liver. And I got a call two weeks ago that I was cleared. So now I'm going to give away part of my liver. Um, I don't know anyone who needs a liver. So the process is it's going to be an altruistic donation and they will find me somebody. Yeah. And we're shooting for summer vacation. And tell us how, how this works. So uh, physiologically, you give away, like, how, like what percent of your liver do they take? Um, if I donate to an adult, they will take between 60 and 70% of mine. Right. If I donate to a, a child, we're looking at 30 to 40%. And then also my gallbladder will be removed because I guess where they cut into the kidney is where your gallbladder is there. So I am part of the process is they automatically take your gallbladder out. And then the healing process of that that surgery for you involves part the liver regenerating. Exactly. So the kidney donation, the recovery was, I mean, it was hard, but it wasn't that bad because it was done laparoscopically. Mm -hmm. The liver is a lot more invasive. Like I will literally be cut a little bit across the bottom of my breastbone all the way completely down to my pelvis, my pelvis. So the recovery for the liver is going to be a lot more invasive than the kidney was, but ultimately your liver rejuvenates and it'll take about up to a year, but it will regrow. That's the crazy part. I never knew that until you told me mm -hmm. that. 
And I think after the liver, I might be done giving body parts away. Yeah, for now. You don't know. For That's now. what you said Maybe. last time. I'm sure I guarantee you said that last time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but you, you know, it's again, I feel like me losing all the weight. Yeah. I was able to take control of my health. And these people who are on these transplant lists for years and years and years waiting, they don't have the capacity to do that. So if if I can help give them their health back the way I got mine back, why would I not? Yeah. And so when we have a, a you know just thousands of teachers coming up on the first, and there's there's a, everyone has a health and nutrition plan, and I think the biggest takeaway of all is yeah for sure go sign up for the Planet Fitness or Camp Gladiator and definitely get some clean foods and buy a book on nutrition all that whatever, but really it's all built on a foundation of digging down deep and finding your why like why am I going to do this because that is what's going to be there when things get really hard, you know and I was there we talked about earlier on January the 2nd when Planet Fitness is like packed and you can't get a machine because everybody's made a resolution that they're gonna lose weight. And then a week later, everybody's gone. Like where did all yeah. those people go? You know, and I, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not gonna be easy, you know, being a teacher and being surrounded by poor food on a daily basis, being exhausted from chasing 24 crazy kindergartners around at the end of the day when you go home and you think you're too tired to work out. And I can sit here all day long and tell you, you need to work out and you need to watch what you eat. But until you find the determination within yourself and you think about why you want to lose weight, nothing I say is going to make you want to do it. You have to figure it out yourself. Yeah. And you also have to find what works for you. You know, along my journey, people would tell me, oh, you need to do this diet or you need to eat this or incorporate this. And nothing they really told me resonated with me. I had to do it my way. I wanted to research the things that I ate that would work for me because what works for me might not work for someone else. You know, yeah. so you have to research it and figure it out for yourself. And you know what I also love is I love how um, just uh, giving you, you are, you were and you still are of your time and just all that you learned. I know a number of teachers have, uh, they, they, they reached out to you after last time you shared your story on the podcast and, um, and you're able to, you know, help some of them and and i really really hope i'm sure you're open to it so i'm just but someone's gonna put it out there oh that, very much so you know after the last podcast and then i did a podcast on teacher fit as well mm -hmm. um i had people reach out to me like what did you do like tell me your secret and honestly there is no secret other than you have to have the willpower like you know, some people call me stubborn. I prefer the word determined. There you go. You know, I'm not stubborn. I'm determined. We got to, you know, we're teachers. We got to put a positive spin on it. Your kid's sure. not all over the place. They're, they're just very helpful and busy. <laughs> uh, you know, we do that. Excited all the time. learners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I had people reach out to me and ask what I did. And, you know, like I said, you have to find the meal plan or the workouts that work for you. I don't mind sharing what I did because what I did might work for you. And if it does, great. Um, but I feel like it's all about balance. You can do keto or you can do Weight Watchers or you can do this or you can do that. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to do a diet because I feel like diets set you up for failure. You mm. have to change your lifestyle completely. You know, I think that's so true. In fact, Tony Hall was just saying she's one of my favorite principals in the nation. She was talking about how teachers often have, you know, it's a really strong and they're able to articulate their why in terms of their professional life. But they also need to have that personal why as well. And, you know, that's that you know, that's that balance part of it that, you know, we can't give away that which we don't have. And we improve every part of our life personally. That is always going to help us with our kids professionally. Exactly. And I feel like, honestly, finding my personal why has made me a better teacher. I've got more energy. I set good examples for my students. You know, the district I was in before, kids didn't always have access to healthy food at home. And when I'm there eating fruit and nuts and healthy things, my kids are asking me, like, well, what are you eating and what's in there? And yeah. I feel like I'm able to set a better example for my students that hopefully is going to help them make lifelong choices. I love it. Pamela, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. I know, I mean, this is the time when people are getting together with families and recovering and recuperating and you could be in your jammies and your, your fuzzy slippers with your feet up and uh, to take a time to, to spend with us tonight. I really, really appreciate all that you do. 
And I do like, you know, if anyone wants to reach out to me on social media, um, if they want to go through you to get to me, whatever they need to do, whatever means they need to travel to get to me, please do so. Like, I would love to talk to you, um, motivate. Sometimes we just need someone to motivate us and guide us down the right path. And, you know, don't, it's easy to say, well, I'll start on Monday or I'll start after the holidays, but you're really only cheating yourself if you do that. So if you really think you have the determination to do it, don't say I'll start when just do it now. Yeah. You know, a, a friend of mine, uh, Keith Klein, he's a nutritionist here in Houston. He always talks about that. You know, anytime you have a start date that, you know, that's built upon this presupposition that there's there's going to be an end date. And typically, if this, there's if you have this start date, that's going to this magic thing is going to happen on Monday. Usually the following Monday, that's that's going to be the end date. Exactly. That's why I said you can't you can't diet. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to make this a lifelong choice. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for failure and you're going to fall off the wagon and end up right back where you were in the first place. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Have a great holiday. You too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Bye.